Hey friends, my name is Emily and you are listening to the Oh, I'm Lonely podcast. This is my podcast where I unpack all the big feelings I have that usually boil down to loneliness and disconnection from various aspects of my life, from career, communities, loved ones, or sometimes just being plain old alone. This is where we talk about all the different places loneliness creeps its sweet baby self into and I try to understand what story the loneliness is trying to tell me. So please, join me, because even though it's lonely here, you aren't alone. Hey friends, <laughs> welcome back to Oh, I'm Lonely. I am your host, Emily Martinez, and tis been a while. I've tried to sit down a couple of times and record what I might be releasing today. If you can hear some noise in the background, um, my husband Gabe is cooking dinner and I can hear the water of the faucet going from the kitchen, but I don't know if you can. So if you can't, disregard. I'm also going to be drinking a glass of wine while we are chatting. So if you hear that, might be some slight misophonia. So if that bothers you, I do apologize. I'll try to edit out as much as I can. But I'm also going to try to not edit this as much because that's one of the issues. <laughs> So, hi, it's been a while, and it's kind of funny, I kind of thought, am I going to be recording this when Gabe comes home? And the immediate answer should have been, what a silly question, Emily, to yourself. (laughs) Of course you will. You get lonely in so many areas. That's the whole fucking reason for this podcast, mates. (laughs) Like, I tried to sit down and record this, but I think I just sat down and recorded it on a bad morning. But I kind of wanted to fill you in on where I've been, uh, what I've been doing, and um, why it's made me really lonely. And why I feel like if you're still here, I see that people are still downloading old episodes. So I feel like people are still lonely out there. I think it's lonelier than ever. And our world is um, slowly, no, our world is quickly um, losing its humanity in so many ways. Um, innocent lives are being taken and, and people with the most power are benefiting from systems that feel like change is going to take the longest amount of time, which might not be true. The daunting feeling of waking up every day in this world Um, And if you're like me, like a highly sensitive person, I kind of feel like I'm losing my mind in a lot of ways because with how much hurt there is in the world, and you know what, and how much hurt there's always been in the world, we just have so much more access to the hurt through social media. We have so much more access to, as my girl Lindsay said on uh, a previous episode that I know y'all love, um that we're looking inside so many people's windows. And so I feel like people are lonelier than ever now, lonelier with their thoughts, lonelier with with social situations, lonelier with their careers, lonelier with fucking everything. I had to take a break from the podcast because I've been going through a really hard season in my life. I've been calling it my winter, Um, even though we're about to enter winter. (laughs) Winter is coming, bitch. Winter's been here for this girl. Um, But I've been in my winter of just kind of hibernating in terms of taking a big rest. I I had a lot of signs feel like they were coming to me in like the springtime and early summer. I felt like I was just getting signs from every which way. Spiritually, I felt like I was having dreams about it. I felt like I was seeing things like seeing messages in like the algorithm without me even saying something out loud. Uh, that I just, my body needed rest, my mind needed rest, my soul needed rest. And I was put into a situation, no, I was given the opportunity, there we go, let's change that perspective. I was given the opportunity to just fully rest. I was let go of a job that was part-time and was freelance. And when I think about that job now, it does feel like the bookends of what I wanted to do with them happened but when it was done I was so sad I was so fucking sad because I felt like it was my last connection to 
the performing arts world that I had at the time. And, and honestly, like still, I felt like I was making a difference. I felt like I was helping people's voices be heard. I felt like I was giving people opportunity that may not have been seen in those opportunities before, AKA I was working in casting. I felt like I was trying to change bullshit that I had experienced from the inside because I've gone through a lot and I didn't want other people to go through it. So when whatever change I could make, I was doing it. I was doing it kind of sly. <laughs> but, you know, the things that I was doing was above board. But I was like, I was like, oh, girl, I'm going to change this shit. And then when I was let go from that, or when that position ended, whatever, which way you want to call it, I kind of had a coming to, to my knees moment, a, a shriya, I think it's called, just kind of that surrendering moment of not knowing what was next. Not knowing who the fuck I was. Not knowing what I wanted to do. I've been through so much trauma in the past uh, <laughs> period. Um, especially since 2020. It feels like it hasn't stopped. I, you know, I did a whole episode about my husband Gabe's medical emergency in 2021. Yeah, 2021. Or is that 2022? No, that was 2021. Was it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know time anymore because it doesn't matter. <laughs> time does not matter. All I know is it's not even 6 p.m. and it's pitch black outside. So, you know, there's where we are. Not only that, it's there's just been so much in my life that I've gone through. I came out. I had both parents get very, very, very sick with COVID. With my dad got so sick with COVID that we were given his odds of survival, which is what the pandemic itself being an actor in this ever changing and not changing landscape um, with multiple strikes and not wanting even if you're not in those unions not wanting to defy those strikes because you don't want to you want to you want to support the cause and not kind of mess up your chances in the future above all so many things the, the social um, injustices of the world and I am one of these people that I'm not very good at protecting my own energy and my own peace and I have a hard time balancing how much of the outside pain I take in which I think in a way is a gift and a curse because it's just hard to get things done to be quite honest being diagnosed with ADHD just life you know moving multiple times like I've had many privileges in the past couple years and blessings, but I've gone through a lot of shit. I've gone through a lot of trauma. And it is taking me, I mean, my body is taking a hit from it. So I have, you know, body image issues more so now than I feel like I ever have. And it's just like, it's a lot. It's just a lot. And I'm a fucking survivor and I'm a warrior, but I'm also tired. I'd love to be soft again. <laughs> I'd love to not be so hard and, and tough with this exterior that I have it all together. Because girl, she, she is treading water most days. And I think a lot of us are. And I know I'm not alone in that. And when I was really getting into making these episodes, really loving it. Honestly, like, I love, I love the guests I've had on. I like my solo episodes a lot. It's just been a lot to emotionally hold space for. Like, it's one thing to have a conversation with someone and to get into it, but like, I feel like I'm a really intense, active listener. So I get really tired after those interviews and I get uh, exhausted after talking about myself. Ugh, like, ew, I hate myself. <laughs> I hate it. But it's true, you know, when, you, when you're kind of emotionally like letting out, relieving yourself <laughs> of your story, it's draining. And then to do it with someone else, the emotional battery gets drained even more. And so to do that was one thing. And then to go back and to edit it was another. It was really real that when I was in rehearsals for um, my first off-Broadway show, I, I just didn't, I didn't have any time. Which I was like, okay, given. Totally valid. Like, let's just enjoy being in the moment and just enjoy this one thing right now. But then it was really hard to get back into it. And then other things started to pile on and life started to happen. And I just didn't have the space. I tried. I tried so many times. The amount of times that I wrote it down on my, like, to-do list. <sighs> and 
And then this summer when I had this crumble, my husband was just like, hey, you haven't stopped. You truly haven't stopped moving despite what you think since at least I've known you, (laughs) at least since graduating college, which (laughs) you can look it up. (laughs) I don't feel, okay, 2012. Graduated college in 2012. Who cares? Aging is a fucking privilege. I graduated in 2012. There we go. And so it's been 11 years since I graduated and 10 or 11 years, something like that. And um, I haven't stopped if I'm working a job that I love versus um, trying to find a job to fill in a space or just trying to fill the gaps. And so much of that time I thought like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm being present. I'm being, I'm being like, I'm in it. But like, I also wasn't because I was always thinking about what's next because that's conditioned. If you're listening to this and you're a musical theater actor or an actor at all, or in, or a dancer, or true, I think truly within the performing arts, it's a, it may be different art mediums. Well, social media is the same. We live in this time where it's like, we're never allowed to just enjoy the present. We're never just allowed to soak it in because we're always looking to what's next. If you're in any type of gig economy, the time spent enjoying what's presently with you is never enough because you're so much energy is always spent to what is next because it's survival, right? It's a survival technique. We need money to live. (laughs) We need a roof over our head, which is a beautiful privilege these days. Truly. Food in our mouths. Wi-Fi. Yeah. So I just, I didn't, I wasn't stopping. I can remember, I think it was like the same day or maybe the day before It was around the content creator whose name shall not be named who played a ukulele for a quote-unquote apology video, which was (laughs) not a a disgrace. (laughs) The way I just want to talk shit. I remember like within that week, I was thought to myself, maybe I should teach myself to play ukulele so I can put it on special skills. I feel like Gabe heard me say it and he was just like, this could totally be my perception, but I just felt like him go... Because I felt that way. Like inner me went, Emily. And you might be listening to that being like, what's the big deal? But if you're in the musical theater world and you're listening to this, how many times have you thought about taking up a hobby? Have you thought about taking up a skill? Because, I mean, anyone, right? Anyone could do this in their in their industry because we're all trying to pick up different skills to to get ourselves higher up in our capitalistic jobs, whether it's like, a test or different trainings. We have to, right? Those those are like the elements of the job. And instead of taking up a hobby because I was actually interested in it, because I actually had love and and curiosity about it, I just said this just to just to just just to put it on the resume. I think I'd seen a a calling for a show for people who played instruments. And it was just another example of how I was trying to fit myself in the mold. And I felt like I had come so far in different ways earlier in the year of being like, there's no mold for me. I'm making my own mold because I've tried to fit the mold. God, how many, God knows how many times and it's never fit. But now I'm really trying to fit it, fit into it again. Like the, it just felt really desperate. I felt shameful because of how desperate it felt in that moment. And it was just a statement about a ukulele. And so that sent me down the spiraling hole of how many other things am I doing just because it's expected of me, just because for someone else. And it felt like the list was so long that it, like it was just symbols, right? It, it wasn't even words anymore. It wasn't even thoughts. It was just like a series of, of symbols. I had this huge cry and Gabe was just like, what if this is an opportunity for you to actually listen to all those signs that you've been seeing and hearing about resting. He's like, you have not, I think I just said this already, but like, he's like, you haven't stopped. What do you actually want to do? What do you actually love? What do you actually want? 
And I went, stop attacking me. <laughs> I went, why are you yelling? No, but I didn't have an answer. If anything, I felt empty. And he suggested, he was like, what if you just actually stopped? What if you stopped doing everything? Because I, you know, financially, we were in a place where I could. But it was just this moment of like, what if you use this opportunity to just be? You don't have any strings attached to you right now. There's no representation. There's no callbacks. There's no auditions. There's nothing's happening right now. And instead of that being us trying to see that as like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Why does nobody want me? The question in that moment became, well, what do you want? Do you actually want this anymore? Because it's okay if you don't. And the thought of that, the thought of stopping, the thought of not, of, of simply being, of letting the wind take me wherever the day was, made me crawl in my skin. Literally, I felt like I had ants in my shoulders. I wanted to rip my skin off. I was like, ah, I fucking hate that. Fuck that. Fuck you for saying that. But also, like, what an opportunity, right? How often do people just get to rest? How often do people get to just pursue what their heart is telling them to do? And so I did, despite me fucking fighting it. I did, and I am still. And I don't really have any answers yet. <laughs> I've had a lot of talks with people in my like trusted circle. I had this really beautiful talk with one of them who was my, was my sister. I don't know if my sister listens. <laughs> but my sister, we had this really long talk, and I got really emotional. You know, there were suggestions of what I could do. And already with my ADHD that those initial, fi like the fire I felt under that, like has waned. But that also to me, okay, that's another thing. Um, I'm so ADHD. <laughs> so fucking ADHD. I, it's so intense. And I'm on medicine. <laughs> but it's so intense. Especially without things to like, especially without distraction. Ooh. Ooh, baby. <laughs> Those thought patterns, wild. Unhinged sometimes. I mean, the amount of crafts I have around that I call my ADHD crafts, I am I'm surrounded right now. I'm also recording this from a hammock that I brought inside because it's too damn cold to sit in a hammock. So I brought the hammock inside, and I'm inside my office recording from a hammock. I made a cocoon. It's dope. And if this sound is any good, I will be recording all of these from here. What was I saying? But my sister said something to me that maybe I was looking for permission. But I was talking about injustices within the theater world. About, you know, abusers being let back into shows and being praised. And it's like all of their offenses were just mysteriously like forgotten about because they bring in money and I was getting so passionate about it and I was getting so angry she's like can I say something to you that might upset you and I was like girl go <laughs> I cry over everything she was like I think I've seen and heard more passion come out of your mouth in the past couple minutes than I've heard you be passionate about performing in years and that broke my heart because performing is my greatest passion or has always been my greatest passion. And honestly, it still is. But it is also hard to explain that feeling of like ecstasy when you're really in it in a show. So I don't explain it to people who aren't in it all the time or I don't, um, I don't know something to unpack because you know what I haven't wanted to sound like an asshole <laughs> you know like I haven't wanted to sound like a fucking asshole when talking about being a performer and feeling like a god on a stage you know like 
you feel unstoppable when you have an audience wrapped in your hand. And to explain that to someone who isn't in that world, it feels, I don't know, I've always felt like I've had to humble myself around it or I'd sound really, really weird or really, really um, egotistical. So I just quieted myself. I made myself small around that. So that was something that made me go really be really sad because I was like, no, I am. I am extremely passionate. I'm on fire when I'm on stage. But also, me being on stage these days has been dictated by powers that be that are not within my control. And so my fire has been extinguished countless times. And so I've just kind of not tended to that fire because it makes me sad. I mean, that was a really good point for me to take away because I was like, well, theater makes me, performing makes me feel like I'm alive in so many ways. But there needs to be something that I do that is within my power that also makes me feel alive. And I've been doing a lot of crafting. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of home decor. And God damn it, do I wish I could make home decor my job. And maybe I will. I haven't figured it out yet. The The organic feeling that I want has not come in. I had a little bit of a moment today with a guy that does our HVAC. And he might, I might help him and his wife decorate their home. <laughs> that might happen. But I don't know. I will give, I will bring updates if that is a thing. But, um, I think I just, okay, back to what I was saying. With my sister, she said some really beautiful things to me that I took away that were just really kind and I'm really grateful for her for saying them. Because she was just like, you, you amplify, you bring people's voices. You might not give people a voice. What I loved what she said that she's like, I don't believe you can give a voice to the voiceless because I believe everybody has a voice. And I was like, damn straight. But she said, but you turn up their volume. You help people know the story a little more. And I think I can do that more here through this medium. You know, I was saying to my therapist, I was like, I'm having such a hard time doing the hard things that require something to be successful. Being, being consistent. Like, it's like, it's like I don't want things to just come easily to me. But I also want things to come easily to me. Because I've had such a hard fuck, fucking couple years. And life has made living hard. And so, I want the thing that I love. Desperately. That makes me want to wake up in the morning and and be excited to get down into it to be easy. You know, like when you're in a relationship with someone that feels like your person. At first, it's so easy, right? It's just easy. And in a way, that's how you know. that. And even when it gets hard, it's easy because you love them. Like the answer is easy, even though getting to it might be really hard. And I think right now, I just don't know whatever hobby I'm taking up or whatever passion I'm going towards, like I have been with theater my whole life. Theater was the thing that, oh, I love theater so much. It is my, it is my person. It is my dream. That I'm willing to put in the work. It's easy, right? I get up there and I'm a natural, you know. I'm a natural at what I do in a lot of ways. So I'm willing to do the work. For years I was like, I'm willing to do it. I will put in the hours. I will put in the sacrifices. I have sacrificed a lot in my career. 
I've sacrificed a lot of personal time. I've sacrificed self-care. I've sacrificed mental health. I've sacrificed family events. I've sacrificed watching nieces and nephews grow up. I've sacrificed friendships. I've sacrificed a lot. A lot of us have. And I know a lot of us have sacrificed so much more, but like, it's all relevant, right? And now I'm in a season of not wanting to sacrifice my peace for something that's not loving me back as hard as I've loved it. And I'm really hoping that this is just a season. I'm really hoping that the minute I truly let go is when it will fall into my lap so that I'll want to put in that work again. The amount of work that I love putting into in a rehearsal room, ooh, baby, do I love that kind of work. I love being so exhausted because I've done such beautiful work. I miss that. I truly do. But I also miss that feeling. I miss that feeling of fulfillment, of being so tired from this beautiful work that you've done that the bullshit doesn't matter. But with theater, for me, recently, the noise got so loud and this bitch gets overstimulated. So I've needed to step back and I've needed to try to find other mediums for art because all I know is that art is, I am an artist. I am a creative. So I'm just trying to nurture those those mediums. I've done a lot of painting. I've done a lot of crafting. There, I have disco fied, meaning putting like disco squares, like mirror squares on so many different things. And it's really giving me joy. <laughs> I have been making clothes. I have been shopping too much. I've been shopping way too much. Um, but I've been decorating. I've been just making and I love that. It helps me escape. It helps me be present. But it's also starting to not feel as yummy anymore. And I think it's because in all of those things, I'm not using my voice. And I know my voice, not only like my singing voice, but I know that my voice, my heart, my message, my, my Emily-ness is my superpower. And so that's why I'm back. And I'm really going to try. And I'm really going to try not to think of this podcast of anything other than me sending an outrageously long voice memo to my friends who they graciously listen to. <laughs> or they don't. And they just like it and they give it a heart because they're like, girl, that was 15 minutes long. I don't have the time. My therapist, even when I send her a voice memo, she's like, I just sit down and take notes. But I just want, I just want to do this podcast. This podcast might evolve into something different but I'm really trying not to think about that. I'm trying to think about the present moment. And we're still lonely in a lot of different ways. And we still want to laugh at that loneliness because if we don't laugh, my God, all we're going to do is cry. <laughs> so, and let's cry. Let's fucking cry. But let's not only cry, you know, like let's also laugh. And also, let's eat. My dinner is ready. My husband graciously made it tonight. It's spaghetti and meatballs. So fuck yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. I'm back. I need to just remember nothing has to be polished because nothing fucking matters. And I am, I am excited. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm screaming. This is the jumble that is my brain. And for some reason, you'll find it interesting. And so let's keep making, let's keep talking. But thank you so much for listening. And I'll talk to you next time.
Bye. Thank you so much to tuning in to this installment of Oh, I'm Lonely. I hope you feel a little more connected than you did before. Today's episode was produced, hosted, and edited by yours truly. Check me out on social media if you want, at Emily Martinez Official on Instagram and Emily Martinez Entertainer on YouTube. But most importantly, it would help us out greatly if you could download, rate, and leave a gorgeous BB comment on our page. You can literally rate the show every single time you open up the Apple Podcast app. So if you could do that, that would be splendid. Because I would really love to help more lovely, lonely human beings feel a little less, well, alone out there. Until next time, my friends.